This postnatal depression is, I didn't suffer it, I was so lucky, but I remember when I had my first child, and again things have changed over time, it's understood now and it wasn't then. And there was a girl, and it must have been, she had the baby born on the same day as I did, and the next day she was sitting in this room, and I think it was I did all the bottles and everything, and she was absolutely sobbing. Now, I understood baby blues and everything to just become like a depression like this and like just quiet and, and all sort of internal feelings and everything. She was really, really crying. Well, and I, I, I just, did that when my um, baby you? was just mm. three days old and it came with the milk, almost like the tears. Mm. And I remember the midwife um, who delivered the baby coming to see how I was. And I said, I'm really happy, but I can't stop crying. I'm sorry. But and I knew I was fine. And it was just like a real rush of hormones. But did you it feel really suicidal? Because I mean, it gets so no. bad, doesn't I think it, with some people? Thing. I think the Do crying you? that comes mm. with the milk is like a one-day thing. And it's not at all the same as postnatal mm. depression, which is like Agreed. a rush of hormones. Mm. And I was lucky I didn't suffer for postnatal depression but after that experience I was frightened I would get postnatal depression so I was so determined to have a lovely time I invited all my friends around to see the baby <laughs> and I didn't get postnatal depression at all I but you really might have been in a vicious circle because you'd have been exhausted with all your friends and just like oh I'm depressed when you're tired it brings you down oh my goodness me that's right there's a difference between baby blues that thing immediately afterwards isn't there when your body physically is in shock more or less isn't it you're right and it's I think it's it's documented that it's day three that you'll have that tidal yeah. wave and I had the same thing I remember sitting in, in hospital and just overwhelmed with tears and with a strange sadness that was a bit confusing because it was you know I'm really you know I wanted this baby she's here that's great but you know there's something was uncontrolling uh, something was controlling me inside mm -hmm. and, and that released everything but I think the post depression thing I mean it's I, I really believe it exists and I and I and I wonder if it if it happens because we put so much pressure on ourselves and I and you know going back to yeah, work early you do and wonder if it happened in like Victorian Edwardian days. Did they have that sort well, of yeah, problem? It can't be yeah, a new can, thing. Exactly because the hormones are, are going yeah. to behave in exactly the same way. So didn't they give them six weeks called laying in in the olden days? And they more or less treated the woman like a mad woman. I read this somewhere or on oh. radio yeah. four or something. Bit it was called a laying yeah. in period and it was for six weeks that women sort of weren't allowed to go out and see anybody and just stay at home with the baby and be dead quiet because we know you're going to be a bit weird. So I think it's been recognised <laughs> for years. Brilliant. I think that's it's such a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Well, it's going yeah. back to that thing about sort of two weeks. My mother was in hospital for yeah. two weeks after each baby. You do need that time to adjust without the pressure. Otherwise, you get no escape from the real world. It's like one day you're you know, motherless, if you like, and yeah. then suddenly the next day you've yeah. got a baby and yet the whole world hasn't changed around you and it's too much, and isn't I it? Agree. You need to adjust I, to it. I agree. And I mean, I think I was one of these women that just pushed myself straight back into, or after six months of um, being with the baby. But when I was with the baby, you know, I was painting rooms and assembling furniture and, and working but freelance the, and the digging nesting, garden beds. Like yeah. thing, all part of the I nesting. think it was crazy woman. I need to feel like I'm achieving something here. And, and as awful as it sounds, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't give what I was doing with my daughter enough, you know, um, uh, kudos, really. You know, I wasn't achieving anything there. It's not all. Yeah, but it's so impossible. Yeah. Everybody yeah. says that. What do you, yeah. women are embarrassed to sort of say, "Oh, I'm a housewife." Yeah. You know, it's like it's, it's not true. And I, it's I think not that, true. I yeah. think that pressure to do stuff is is really sort of you know accentuating the postnatal depression um, that you know that's happening, or it, it's encouraging it because like, we're just not taking that time. As you said, Rachel, which I love, I wanted to enjoy my baby. And yeah. no one, you know, that's not a big thing anymore. It's kind of like, I want to have my baby and I want to get back and I want to do this. And, yeah. and yes. all of that overwhelming commitment yeah, and responsibility yeah. with mm. deprivation, with hormones, with, you know, a bit of scary, maybe financial pressure or, you know, partners changing. I think it's the combination of all yes, of those exactly. things. That's I was all right. Song. I feel like the were you? In fact, here. I <laughs> thought you would be even worse because no. you've had two. So your hormones are going to be even doubly... Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was just because I was too, too busy with having two of them. One, mm. When they were born, one of them had to go into special care because her lungs weren't developed because they were born um, five weeks prem. And, and I, I, perhaps it's because I had one to look after and one constantly on my mind. And the only mm. time I cried was when she was poorly. Mm. And I don't think it was postnatal depression mm. or, or baby blues. Yes, I you think it was because anyway. I was worried. Yes. Yes. So I don't actually remember, really... 
worrying too much. I think I just thought, fantastic, I've got these babies, I'm going to get on with my life. You wanted them very much. And I think, I think older, you know, I was 35 when I had my babies and I was just grateful I'd had babies. You yeah. know, because you get all these reports about once you're 35, you're 35 fertility declines. I was just like, so please, I've got a baby. Yeah. Maybe it's younger mothers mm. who get postnatal oh, depression. Well, I, I, don't know. Know. I, was, I was 24. All right, well, the next, very next day I was 25, but I like to think I was 24, because <laughs> <laughs> technically I was. So I suppose I'm, I'll be considered a young mum. And I didn't, I didn't with any of the children. I, that's not strictly speaking, so with the third one, I think I did, but it wasn't a depression so much. I was so angry. Funnily enough, it, so I suppose that's a form of depression. I was so angry with Chris. And I remember thinking, he's doing, yes, yeah. he's doing nothing and yeah. everything. He said, well, I haven't changed. And I went, that is actually the point. Mm. Yeah. You haven't adapted yeah. to this thing. I am worn out. This is now my third child. Mm. And I'm dealing with all these things. Plus, I had two stepchildren. And so that was, again, I mean, like you were sort of saying, you would have felt exactly the same way. It wasn't postnatal depression when your daughter went into... Um, what was it called? It's Kaboo, special care baby. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. So I think it was that. I would have felt like that anyway. Well, it's funny. I remember sitting at a dinner party with um, some friends, and I think my daughter was four months old, and I was sitting next to my best male friend, and they'd had a baby six months before us, and I, I sort of really quietly you know, sort of said, isn't it hard? Like, aren't you tired? Are you finding it as much of a struggle as I am? And he just looked at me with this strange, you know, blank expression on his face and said, I don't know what you're talking about. My yeah. life hasn't changed. Uh, I still go out to work it and I just come... Men and it's exa- not fair. And here was I in this turmoil of, am I depressed? Am I unhappy that I've got this child because I'm not coping with all of mm. the, you know, all the things that are going on? And he just looked at me and said, but I, I just go to work. And I, mm. the difference is I come home to, to, um, to two people at the end of the day, not mm. one, and I love it. And I think, oh, did you oh. ask her, though? Did you get to I ask her? I didn't. No, I didn't. Because she, her um, whole thing was, I want to have babies and I want to be at home. And, and she would never have said... She wouldn't have ever admitted to feeling strange. No, or... because I think this but was But that's also... Don't you work. think that's a danger as well? This is why the depression comes mm-hmm. on. It's like, if you admit to feeling low or not perhaps feeling yeah. as happy as you thought you might be when yeah. the baby or comes... Or feeling tired. Or feeling tired, one, then you're suppressing a real feeling. And that's all going to factor into exactly. the fact that you're getting depressed and low. Exactly. I think a lot of women yeah. feel lonely as well because suddenly, although you've got the baby, you, you're responsible for it and you mm. can't just go out and do stuff because yeah. the baby's asleep and you have to stay there. And I think some women possibly feel like it's, they're the only ones it's happening to that's and they don't know. I, I, yeah. think, I think that's why it's really good, the baby groups yes, they have. Because yeah, I, I yeah. joined an NCT baby group and I loved mm. it. And I have to say, because I had worked for years and years ever since I was 18, I absolutely adored those yeah. coffee mornings with the other mums and all showing off our babies. And I thought it was great, you know. There's and a lot I think of people out there, though, that don't join these no. kind of groups because they, they don't know anyone there. Well, and and it's the imagery. Which is a I have to yeah. say, it's like school coffee mornings and parents sort of like thingies, and you just think, oh God, it's going mm. to be so dull. And all we're going to talk about is my child's grade or my child's this, that, and the other. It's not promoted in the right way. But there are no, other mothers like mm. yourselves who've worked, who've become mothers, and I found my group really interesting. They'd all had great jobs and careers beforehand and then had babies, and I didn't find them dull mornings at all. I used to love it, and I used to think, oh, this is nicer than going to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sitting you have to discover that by going. I, I think going, a lot yeah. of people think, yeah. oh, God, that's going to be dull, so they don't even go yeah. in the first place but to discover so it. But it's so important to get out and talk to them. I yeah, think before that, because that otherwise you're on alone. your own. Yeah. yeah, well, it's like a problem yeah. shared. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, exactly. Like, no, I'm not on. You know, this is quite normal. Yeah, actually, that's a point because I think I think if, if more people spoke about how you know whether they are struggling, as we've said before, or um, you know sleep deprived or whatever, if we spoke about it, people can help, and maybe that would that would help with these incidences of postnatal depression mm. happening more often. Because I know for one, I didn't want to talk because I thought I should be handling this. I know yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's it. You suppress it. Yeah. But you know they're not giving you enough help in the hospitals. Mm. And, I mean, honestly, this does really so date it. There weren't disposable nappies when Dex was born. Actually, that's not strictly speaking. There were, but they were so expensive. Mm. So it was the terry towels and the pads and everything. I didn't even know how to do one. They hadn't even shown me. I know. remember trying to do it, going, bloop, 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 and then the, the pit and picked him up to sort of <laughs> cuddle him, and they just all fell off. <laughs> and there's not enough. Yeah. They don't teach you and they don't guide you. Yeah. And how can you possibly learn? No in 24 hours from having a baby. Like breastfeeding. But that's another subject. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Tried breastfeeding too at the same time. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that to you. <laughs>